between the cattle fence and the power lines and then take off. And I, you know, I keep telling Calvin, I said, you need to go back and see if you've had another implant because he saw two UFOs close up after he had that implant removed. But, you know, it was really strange. He was on my show here on Friday. Every time we started getting into about his implant, the phone line would scramble. It would uh, start breaking down and making noise. He was on a landline. So I said, hey, it's not working. Can you switch over to your cell phone? Soon as we talked key words, implant, guess what? It happened again. Now, I just wanted you to know about that, about implants. And, you know, what you went through, I, I, here they, she had you against the, the wall in the spaceship, I, I guess in the laboratory or whatever they're do, doing this at. What happened when you fought back? Uh, she had to take it because I was a lot bigger than her, but I wasn't counting on that old big ugly one interfering with it. I got her head and I beat her head against the wall and she started bleeding kind of black looking blood. And, uh, that's when all of a sudden the other one that brought me on board the first time, the robotic looking creature, he come back alive and come over and grab me and injected me again with something else. Now this is 20 years later. And, uh, then next thing I knew, I woke up on the boat, but I had blood when I got uh, to the house that night. It was blood all over my T-shirt where I had bled, and uh, I guess she had bled. And what I should have done was kept the shirt and had DNA run on it. Oh, yeah. To see if any of that would have come out. That would have been but, so interesting. I mean, that, that would have been all the proof right there. For, you know, all the abductions, you know, not just yours, but all these other people that claim that they've been abducted. But go ahead. But, you know, back in, they really didn't have, I want to just get it off. And I, when I got the boat to the landing, I rinsed the blood out of my shirt and all. But I've had people come up and say, oh, they're good. They're going to uh, help us and they're going to create a great environment for us. No, you never convinced me of that. Oh, well, can I say this, Calvin? And then I think James out there has a question or two or three for you. If they were going to help us, mankind, with our planet or our people, right? Would right. Antarctica wouldn't be melting like it is. The sea levels wouldn't be rising. We wouldn't be having all these earth changes that's going on. The magnetic field wouldn't be moving like it is. The, the, the equator, you know, from the Atlantic Ocean, you know, to, it goes all the way up to the UK. It's stalling. That little warmth, uh, it comes from the equator. If that stalls, that's going to put, you know, Europe in a mini ice age. And it's very close to stalling. We don't hear about that on the news. But if they're here to serve man and help man, I, I don't see them doing anything other than hurting people, abducting people, you know, and wrecking people's lives. Now, I think, James, you have a couple questions for uh, Calvin. Why don't you ask him? Yeah. How you doing, Calvin? It's your buddy, James. Hey, bud. Hey, uh, hey what's up? Um, I got to ask you, when you were on the um, ship, did you notice any peculiar smells? And also, did you notice any peculiar smells coming from the, any of the beans? No, I didn't. Uh, and what that might be, living here on the coast, it always has a bad smell to it. They have pokey plants and uh, there's dead fish, you know, wash up. So, you know, you it's kind of overwhelming just kind of smelling the natural things around so you wouldn't really notice another smell i wouldn't think Mm -hmm. and um when was your last abduction that you can remember was that 93 or was there another one after that no it was just 93 as far Mm -hmm. as i know it's just been the one in 73 and one in 93 and i think that one in 93 was to come back and uh, work on whatever they implanted in me or get it out Right. Now, do you I, think you still may I have an implant? I think I was actually going to work, uh, put another one in, and it didn't work out real good for them. And they, they pretty much left me alone since I got violent with them. And I'm not a violent person. <laughs> right. But, I mean, you, 
you, at that point, you had nothing left to lose. I mean, the mental anguish you must have been going through for 40 years, it's got to be horrific. I mean, do you ever go to bed at night and maybe worry that they may, may come and get you again? No, you know, to be honest with you, doing this book has helped me more than anything. This first book, when it came out, I started doing my own research. I started hunting for answers and things. But I've got to meet a lot of people under these same conditions and uh, at these conferences and all. And it's kind of like therapy to me. It's helped me deal with it. But until then, now I still don't sleep at night. I go to bed at 5 in the evening. I get up at uh, 11 o'clock, and I'm up all night until 5 the next evening. And my wife, she goes to bed about 11, and uh, that's when I come alive. But I think that's just working habits, but I just can't sleep at night. I can see why. My goodness. Scary stuff. Well, thanks for answering those, Calvin. Oh, you're welcome. Now, Calvin, do you ever have any nightmares of being abducted and being in that spaceship and that female alien, you know, doing, you know, whatever she was doing to you? No, I really don't. Uh, and, you know, I asked Travis Walton about the same thing when I was at this conference in Arizona. And I don't, I think he deals with it about like I did. He just put it out of the back of his mind. And I also asked Betty Hill uh, the same thing when I went and spent that three days with her. And she goes out and looks for them at night. So, you know, I don't know. I try to keep my mind on something important like uh, fishing or making money. Or or your houseboat. Or my houseboat. (laughs) That would be under the fishing thing here. Oh, yeah. It, was that your excuse you told your wife, Calvin? Hey, I'm going to build us a new house, and it, it's going to be a houseboat, and, you know, we're, it's going to be so relaxing because we're going to be on the water. By the way, I can fish and bring us fish uh, almost any night. Yeah. Oh, and she loves to fish, too. So, you know, that that was right up her line. And you know what's strange uh, about this? I never talked to her about, these deductions or anything, we just, she knows it because it's been all over the news and all. But the strange thing, she'd get in a boat at 1 o'clock in the morning to go fishing with me. She's not afraid to go out. That's kind of like she said, uh, you know, regardless of what you do, what kind of protection you have, with the advanced knowledge that they have, they're going to get you anyhow. It don't matter. And she's right. And I, so we just kind of live our life normal. <clears throat> I used to carry a gun everywhere I went. But, you know, I don't know more. Because the alien things don't bother me. It's uh, a lot of people that bother me. You know, it, uh, the way that the world is right now. I tell you, unless we get... The politicians straighten out, and the world kind of straighten out a little bit. We in for a heap of hurt. No, well, you said that better than I have said it for the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know what really gets me is what's going on in Washington D.C. It's nothing more than the circus, and it's been that way for the last couple of years. It, I, I mean, our economy—we've been lied to about our economy. Okay, it's it's going to all come out very shortly, and it is coming out. The economy wasn't as robust as we were told it was. Uh, the job market now, I'm um, industry and manufacturing is like at a 10 year low. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's scary what's going on. And I don't understand the population. They just like, why is people standing for it? They didn't 30 years ago. They didn't do it 20 years ago. They would do something about what's going on. But yet, nobody seems to really care. We don't have much of an EPA anymore. We don't have any much, you know, anything anymore because all the regulations that were here to protect you or your grandkids or, you know, their grandkids has all been stripped away. It's scary. 
what's so bad, they have these career politicians up there, and they they just got comfortable with their jobs, and they don't do their jobs. I can't think of anybody in Washington right now that's doing their job. None of them. Well, and, and it's bad. Well, you know what? I, I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat or what are you. I think right now they should be looking at what is good for America and for the population. Good. Not worry about the, the what party they're in. Worry about, you know, who put them in office. Us, the people. They're not doing that. No. None of them are. Not the Republicans, not the Democrats. There, there's no good that can come out of Washington right now anywhere. Well, I got to cure for it. You know what we do? We all meditate at night and, and, and meditate for the aliens that go over Washington, D.C. And, and snatch away all the politicians. And maybe we might get the type of aliens that are cannibals and eat brains. But then on yeah. the other hand, if they eat brains, they're going to return all the politicians because, one, they don't have any brains. Two, if the Martians did or aliens ate the brains of the politicians, they would definitely starve to death. Yeah, it would be a bad situation. I can't think of one person in Washington that needs to be there. That they proved one thing, that the United States can run without politicians. I think probably better. And, and here's the thing, okay? Disclosure about UFOs. Sure, strange. It, it came out when it did, and it came out from the Navy. I think the best disclosure we have that aliens exist is when the Navy admitted that, hey, there is UFOs, and we really can't do anything about it. No, it's nothing you can do. And uh, I know uh, when this abduction happened in 1973, all the men at the shipyard said, well, we're going alien hunting tonight. They all went and got their rifles and their boats, and they said, are you going with us? I said, are you an idiot? No. I said, them little rifles ain't going to do just a whole lot to somebody that can travel from other planets and all this. I said, don't be stupid. But, you know, the way I look at it, we, we have life here on this planet. We have different races here on this planet. We have a lot of good people here. But we also have a lot of bad, and we got a lot of sorry here. And I'm sure all these other plant, uh, wherever this other life is, it's about the same situation there. It might be some good uh, aliens out there. I hadn't found them. <laughs> then, you know, it, it might be some pure evil ones. And I seem like I have found the ones that like to experiment. Well, again, you know, again, if they abduct somebody out of their house or out of their car and, you know, I've had, you know, guys, you know, tell me that they were abducted and, and, uh, you know, it, 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 it were cut open without anything to numb them up and, uh, you know, and had, you know, things shoved into them and all this stuff. It, it's scary what people have been going through, what you had to go through. And, and and then you get a group of people that say, oh, these aliens are here to protect mankind. They give off orbs. They're keeping us from blowing our, ourselves up. I, I look, yeah. if I did that, if I went and just grabbed some guy or woman off the street and took him into my basement, laid him on the table and started draining blood or try to put my fingers down the, their throat or cut them open just to see what appendix looks like. I'm going to go to prison for the rest of my life. I'm not going to have oh, any you freedom. You never would get out of jail. Probably not. I'd probably be shot before I even got into court. Hey, we're going to have to go on break, and then we're going to have you like the last half an hour. So if you want to go get uh, something to drink or another dish of sherbet, hint, hint. Uh, we'll be back in four minutes. Uh, you're listening to Calvin Parker, our guest on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark, and we'll be back. 